Imagine you're standing in front of four doors. Each opens up a different era of Indian education for you to experience once again. First, we have 1500 to 800 BCE, the age of Gurukuls, a system designed to bring out the best version of you, combining intellectual, physical and spiritual growth. Then from 1813s to 1947, we saw the East India Company launch the colonial education system. A standardized curriculum designed to train you into becoming a loyal clerk to serve the British Raj. Then from 1985 to 2021, we saw the rise of the engineering race. Students who worked hard and got into an IIT ended up getting a chance to earn a big fat package with an opportunity to go abroad. The coaching industry exploded and IIT J training became the norm for any student who wanted to earn a good life. But in the last four years, things have started to change. Just going to college or having a fancy degree is not enough. So are college degrees now worthless for the Gen Z? Because college fees going up while average salary packages are going down. And while everyone knows that AI is changing the world, the majority of you are falling into a trap that has existed in the world for decades. So let's start with chapter number one. I once heard Tanmay Bhatt spoke about India being a hopium economy, where customers love buying products that sell hope. India spends very highly on hope, physical hopium products, I would say. We spend very highly on education. Yes. What is hopium? Uh, products that give you hope for a Better state earnings. that you want to you wanna be in. For many of us, buying a college education is one of the most expensive hopiums our parents invest in. And parents usually go by first impressions and brand value. They don't really go into the depths of what a college is actually teaching. They simply check how old is the brand and how good were the last year's top placements. They look at an ad that sells them hope and instantly enroll their kids because they don't know what else to check. They think that just a B.Tech or an IIT stamp will guarantee a great career for their kid. Firstly, not everyone can get into an IIT. I think I scored 108 marks out of 360 in my J mains in 2016. 108 out of 360. That too after going to JE coaching for more than 3 years. I completed my B.Tech 5 years ago. Trust me when I say this, a lot of my friends who didn't get even a single job in 2020 are now living a very comfortable life because eventually over a span of 5 years, they ended up learning the right skills at the right time. And a lot of my friends who picked the wrong skills in 2020 are now anxious about their future because there is just not enough opportunity in their niche. But most colleges won't talk about this because most colleges are not evolving fast enough. Engineering curriculum to this day contains what can only be described as fluff. Luckily, there are a few handpicked institutions that are making changes to their syllabus and the way they teach. Universities across India are collaborating with NIAT to deliver industry-ready education. NIAT is not a university or college. They are the ones helping colleges take their B.Tech degrees to the next level. When a college is supported by NIAT, their B.Tech degrees have two curriculum strategies. One is reverse engineered, where they cover topics that HRs ask in actual technical rounds of interviews. And the second is real-time updated, with insights from the latest industry trends. Both of them run on NIAT's connections with more than 3,000 companies. But what exactly are these new trends? And what kind of students will get paid more in the future? And what are the major disruptions that AI will bring into core engineering concepts? The way we build products is changing with AI. If you want to get placed in the next unicorn, or even if you want to build the next unicorn, you need to know what kind of ideas will be eligible for that kind of success and what kind of talent will such companies hire. Now there are four major changes that you need to know. Number one, AI will code and humans will program. Most people don't really understand the difference between coding and programming. Coding is when you translate logic into a language a machine can understand. So you need to learn how to speak in Python or C++ if you want to communicate with a machine. And learning the language of Python or C++ is you understanding how coding works. Coding is where we execute the what and the how behind things. 
Programming is when you decide what the logic should be in the first place. If coding is execution, then programming is architecture. Therefore, BTEC programs that focus more on the problem-solving part of programming will end up creating students who will have enough skills to utilize AI to its maximum potential. NIAT brings real-time industry insights from a network of more than 3,000 companies that are distilled into structured reports and shared regularly with the universities they collaborate with, which helps them regularly create more outcome-oriented curriculums. On number two, start seeing AI as a feature and not the main product. A lot of students today think that they have to build their own AI or build a career just in AI. Most students make a product and make AI the most important thing about it. In future, everything will have AI. So it makes no sense to boast about your solution being AI enabled or positioning that as the USP. It'll be equivalent of you saying that my product is Wi-Fi ready as if being able to connect to Wi-Fi is a really big deal. You need to learn how to solve and break down niche problem statements. Take Cursor AI. It's not an LLM. It's just a smart wrapper around existing AI models designed specifically for coders. And if you do not know what a wrapper is, Go to ChatGPT right now and say, explain to me AI rappers as if I am a 10 year old. In fact, if there is any term throughout this entire video that is confusing to you, simply learn how to go to ChatGPT and ask, explain this to me as if I'm a 10 year old. Coming back to the topic, students who are learning how to embed AI smartly and build niche products are in the gold rush. Look at this chart here. We have companies doing millions of dollars in annual recurring revenue with less than 20-30 people. And if you want to be eligible for such teams, you need to know how to build such products with the help of right APIs. All NIAT supported BTECs facilitate project-based learning and hands-on practice through real-world projects. They help you study applications like WhatsApp, Amazon, and Netflix to make you an actual product builder. Or number three, become either an operator or builder of AI. Most high-performing teams globally across different verticals and subjects and niches, every single team will soon be split into two parts, AI operators or AI builders. Now, builders will be the ones creating all of these AI agents and automations, while operators will be the one who will use these agents and automations. Now, it goes without saying, AI builders will always get paid more than operators because it's going to be a pretty difficult skill to learn. It's going to be slightly more technical than just being an operator. And the demand will be high, the supply will be low, especially in the beginning. Also, the job roles are starting to blend with each other. And this is going to be a very important thing for you. Shopify's chief design officer, Carl Rivera, officially announced that as of June 2025, they have removed UX from their titles. UX stands for user experience. In fact, we've been teaching UX on the YouTube channel for the past three years. He said, we just dropped UX as a title at Shopify. Same for content design. If you design, you're a designer. If you write, you're now a writer. Simpler and better which kind of makes sense because a UX designer always used to do a lot more than just UX. And now with AI, any beginner UX designer will be able to do a lot more than just fixing their Figma files. The lines between a developer, a product manager and designers will also start dissolving at a rapid rate. A designer will start coding and a coder will start designing. With AI, your output will become your identity and not your job title. In order to promote the idea of honing high hybrid real-life engineering skills, NIAT-supported universities often host their own hackathons inside their campus. These events are usually where critical real-life solutions come from. Students are then encouraged to work on these projects post the hackathon as well. Number 4 understanding the echo loop. I'm sure you're wondering, Anj, why is this chapter called the echo loop? Because the way we approach solutions and product building and app building has forever changed with AI. Traditionally, even if you open up computer science textbooks today, you will know that we used to build products using the waterfall model. This was a very rigid step-by-step -step process of building something module by module, piece by piece, phase by phase. Then came the agile model, where we learned to build products iteratively with feedback. So you would build something, get feedback, fix it, and you would not really wait for the final day to launch something, and you would probably improve on the go. But now with AI, it feels like you can skip everything and just jump to the final output. A landing page, done in 30 seconds with Lovable. A mobile app, 
built with Replit overnight. A marketing campaign just prompt a bunch of tools like ChatGPT and VO3 and it's sorted. It feels like a lottery, but it isn't. Because here is the truth that no one talks about. You might be able to generate a working prototype using AI, but most AI outputs are like black boxes. They look shiny on the outside, but inside they're full of technical debt, unpredictable bugs, and zero documentation. So even if you end up building something with the help of AI, in one tenth of the time, you won't really know how to maintain it, scale it, or fix it when something breaks. And a lot of stuff breaks when you launch something into the market. So what is the right approach? The right way is to follow the echo loop. Most product building courses are not talking about this. Here is how this model works. Start with carefully understanding the user and define the problem statement. This will be a result of hundreds of customer calls and sitting in your user persona's office. Then use AI to rapidly prototype a version from A to Z. Then once you've seen the final product, come back to A and reverse engineer each component using AI as a co-pilot. Now while you're going from A to Z, fix all the edge cases and start documenting them. Rebuild the code flows manually and carefully fix the code for long-term usage. But why do we need to do this? because you cannot troubleshoot something smartly unless you know how it was built. NIAT supported BTEX include real world projects across various domains like full stack development, data science, AI, and machine learning. And for students who don't just want jobs, but want to build something, NIAT supports that as well. Entrepreneurship at NIAT is led by experts like Mr. Divyansh Mathur, who's an IIT Delhi alumni and founder of two VC-backed startups. With a 10 crore seed fund, and access to more than 100 angel investors and VCs, NIAT helps students turn ideas into real startups. They replicate real industry challenges tackled by developers at Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and other top companies, giving you hands-on experience with cutting-edge tech stacks. Now, all of this practice done in college not only enhances your resume and portfolio, but also helps you stand out in job applications. So to quickly summarize, most colleges are selling outdated syllabus. Most students who succeed in the real world are the ones who learn the right skills at the right time and not necessarily the ones who will be with the best college stamps. AI will code and humans will program. You need to become a master problem solver. That's what companies are hiring for. That is something AI will not replace anytime soon. Become either an operator or a builder of AI. The lines between roles are getting blurry. Designers are coding, coders are designing, PMs are doing both of them and you need to be hands-on with latest AI tools and build real projects to get hands-on experience. Your job title won't really matter, but your outputs will matter a lot. Learn how to combine and stitch tools like an architect because just knowing individual tools will not be a flex. If you can learn something in 10 days, anybody can learn it in 10 days. So learn how to learn difficult things. Build using the echo loop. Learn how to prototype with AI. Then rewind and rebuild. And if you cannot explain how it was built, you cannot maintain it or scale it gracefully. And if you're planning to choose a college, then you can read more about NIAT supported BTEX. So Anj, you haven't really answered the question you've put in the title of this video. Are college degrees worthless for Gen Z? Well, it kind of depends on what college you choose and how you end up spending your time in that college. I am a big believer of college education. I've said this from day one. I have never recommended a student to drop out of college. I've had my life's best memories and learnings from my own college itself. I was able to travel the world at Hack MIT, Hack Howard, Microsoft Imagine Cup. All of these things were possible because I was an official college student. So just make sure you do enough research before you take any decisions and go and see the syllabus of your shortlisted colleges and carefully scan their curriculum before you start investing in them. And I would love to hear your opinion on it as well. Tell me in the comment section, what are your reflections? What were your mind opening moments? And I would love to see what you think about it. Make sure you click on the bell icon so you do not miss our next video. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra and you are watching the Cutting Edge School enabled by the Zero One Network by Zerodha.